Harry's wife. I am a stallion. Now, of course, you all know that that's accurate when it appertains to me. But I'm actually, of course, talking about Ginger Bollocks, the Prince of Pink Pancakes. And yes, as the disclosures flow thick and fast from Spare, we learn yet more that tells us so much about Harry, the dynamic he has with his wife, how this whole publication has been generated to serve the purposes of the gruesome twosome within their shared awful fantasy, how much of the wife's hand lies behind the material and when we get into the real nitty gritty of it, when it's properly released, we'll undoubtedly see her influence already. It's there with the trivia that has been disclosed and the emasculated Harry with his rumble in the kitchen revelation. It's often the case, of course, that there are certain individuals that go for the tell all in their memoirs. If they write their memoirs, when they are in late life, invariably in their 60s, 70s, and they've lived much of life, some to come, but they're perhaps slowing down a little, and they're able to talk about all of the events through their life with the benefit of wisdom and experience that comes with having lived for several decades. Furthermore, that individual, where they're famous, will invariably have ridden fame and understood its very vagaries. They will also recognise the times when it was important to speak and the times when staying quiet would be far more judicious. Too often, of course, some Johnny-come-lately or Janie-come-lately, encouraged by the gods of reality television, are told, release a book about your life. You need to capitalise while your fame is in the ascendancy. Wait too long and you'll be replaced by somebody else and you'll become tomorrow's fish and chip paper. And thus we're treated to the spectacle of people writing their memoirs in their late 20s and early 30s, when most people are thinking, but what have you actually achieved? You turned up and flashed your kebab on a reality television programme and then the next we all have to learn about the fact that you lived in a shitty flat above a fish and chip shop and were bullied by the local nutcases. Hardly a riveting read. One is far more interested in the decades worth of material for somebody who's actually been through life and can be sagacious about the information that they have disclosed. Harry, unfortunately, is demonstrating the mentality of the reality TV star who's being told, get it all out there, don't spare the detail. Okay, you're 38, so you're sort of at a midpoint roughly in your life. But tell everybody what's really been going on. Now, perhaps this material is being saved for the other three books that apparently are going to follow. But with Harry, there is a lot more that he could actually talk about than some substance. What was it like going to Afghanistan? How did he feel about the protection that was afforded to him when he was there? He could talk about what it was really like with regard to standing behind his mother's coffin. He could talk about the experiences as a young royal of going to school. What was that like? His interaction with friendships. There is so much that he could talk about that many people will, of course, never experience. But also, in terms of they wouldn't necessarily want to experience, but they'd be interested in it. Talk to us about the Invictus Games. Tell us about your relationship with your father. Tell us about some of your former relationships. But not this pathetic micro details about my necklace got broke and my wife said this and Catherine said that and there was a little bit of cross words between them. We all can see there that's the influence of Harry's wife. Nobody's interested in that material. Invariably, most of it's made up. But 
nobody's interested in those little spats and niggly conversations that have gone on. Furthermore, he hasn't thought at all about the impact of his disclosures. He is behaving like a cult member. And I am going to be doing a video in the next day or two. He's in a cult. No, not he's a cunt, but he's in a cult. Explaining why he is in one, how that affects his behaviours. And one of the impacts that it has upon him is that he's simply not thinking about what he's doing. He's not a particularly bright man, as we know, and he's proven easily led. And the difficulty is he's being exposed as a consequence, as I've explained in She's Hanging Him Out to Dry. But also this next disclosure that I'm going to mention about, which we, has been encapsulated so beautifully in the thumbnail, demonstrates the fact that he's simply not thinking and he's allowing the fog of his cult membership to guide him in these terrible decisions. He has got two children. They will, at some point, become older, access the internet, perhaps pick up a copy of spare, a spare copy, if you will, and read it. And do you think they really want to know all the tawdry details about their father's behaviours? Do they really want to look upon that and think, gosh, that's my dad, and also, gosh, that's my mother? Do you really think that they want to know about what I'm going to tell you about next with regard to his loss of a virginity in a field behind a pub with a woman who treated him like a stallion? Harry is an individual that has access to certain events that most people will ne never get near, never be invited to, never experience. And there's a massive amount of things that he could cover, which would be of interest to people without causing a problem for him vis-a-vis -vis his relationship with other members of his family and also effectively to embarrass his children. But he's so poorly advised, so caught up in the fog of his emotional thinking and his cult membership, he has repeatedly engaged in the tawdry disclosures. And here's another one. We turn to the report from The Telegraph by Gordon Rayner, who writes with the headline, Prince Harry lost virginity in field behind pub with woman who treated him like a stallion. <laughs> Duke of Sussex recounts 2001 encounter with an older woman in his autobiography spare. Prince Harry lost his virginity in a field behind a pub to an older woman who treated him like a young stallion, he reveals in his autobiography. After having sex, the unnamed woman slapped him on the bottom and sent me on my way, the prince reveals. I wonder if she stuck a sugar lump in his mouth and perhaps uh, put the tack on him. He was still at Eton at the time, and it says it happened in 2001, meaning he was 16 or 17. The description of the encounter is among the more light-hearted revelations in the memoir entitled Spare, in which the prince also details family feuds and his drug taking. His memoir has gone on sale in Spain, where the Telegraph bought a Spanish-language copy. The Duke of Sussex discloses that he wrongly thought his open-air sex session by the tabloid press, when in fact a newspaper had found that he was using recreational drugs. At the end of 2001, he was taken out of Eton for a launch, I beg your pardon, for a lunch with a royal bodyguard known as Marco, who told him, They've asked me to discover the truth, Harry. The prince writes, I suspected that he was referring to the recent loss of my virginity a humiliating episode with an older woman who liked horses a lot and treated me like a young stallion. I mounted her quickly, after which she spanked me on the backside and sent me on my way. One of my many errors was to do it in a field, just behind a crowded pub. He doesn't actually explain why it's an error that he did it in the field. Perhaps there were too many flies and they bit him on the arse as well as him getting spanked. Or perhaps she spanked him on the backside because there was a a horsefly nestling there and she wanted to squash it before it used its uh, mandibles to 
open up his backside and give him a nasty bite. Perhaps she was looking out for him. It's quite entertaining that he describes the fact that he mounted her quickly and then she, he was spanked on the backside and sent on his way. The article continues, when he asked the policeman what he meant, he told him about your drug taking. A tabloid newspaper had called his father's office to say they had proof Harry had been taking drugs in various places, including a bike shed behind a pub and at Highgrove. Prince Harry told the bodyguard the allegations were lies, but now admits to taking several different recreational drugs during his life, and his cannabis use has been well documented, so he lied to a police officer back then. Last year, following a suggestion that the prince had lost his virginity to an older woman, the actress Liz Hurley, see parts passing, was asked by an interviewer if it was her, to which she replied, not me, I'm not guilty. Evidently, Liz Hurley isn't that interested in equestrianism either, which results in her being excluded from inquiries with regard to who the mystery horsey woman is who treated Prince Harry like a stallion. What's also interesting is that he describes it as humiliating. Is this because he reached the pinnacle rather too quickly, which would be expected for a young man if he's doing it for the first time? Or is it the case that she rode him around and smacked him on the arse and said, giddy up, horsey? And, uh, and then pushed his head into the grass and told him to eat it whilst deciding whether he should be sent to the knackers yard for glue. Who knows? It's not really clear why it was so humiliating. Uh, one would think that he's getting his rocks off with an older woman. It's the stuff of many a teenage boy's fantasy. And the word humiliating wouldn't be appropriate unless, of course, she really did treat him literally like a stallion. Maybe there's more than the Telegraph is letting on, and I will be seeking out, like a heat-seeking missile, this particular excerpt, tawdry as it is, from Spare, to see if we can find out more about why it was humiliating. But once again, you'd think that if Harry's wife truly loved her husband, and we know, of course, that she doesn't, but even though she tries to make a pretense of it, she would have said, you don't want to be writing about this type of thing. It's by the by. There's plenty of other things you can write about. And what about the children? Of course, this demonstrates that A, she doesn't care about him. B, she doesn't care about the children. All she's interested in is the impact this will make in terms of money. And of course, as I'll be explaining in a forthcoming video, he's giving her loads of ammo. All of these disclosures could easily be thrown back in his face as she turns around and says, it's only now I realise the monster that I married. Harry is going down a very slippery slope indeed. And the problem he's got is, who is advising him? His wife advises him, but only to do the things which are beneficial for her and not for him. She's a narcissist. She doesn't care about him. Once upon a time, he would have advisors at Buckingham Palace keeping him away from this kind of nonsense. But he's turned around and told them to foxtrot Oscar. What about his friends? Nope. She's ensured that they've all been pack sent packing and replaced by a load of arse-licking false friends that are really members of her coterie. What about family to guide him? Not a chance. Too busy crying about the fact that Big Willie Stiley broke his necklace in the kitchen. And, of course, other members of the family have kept their distance as a consequence of the behaviours. There might be some professional advisors, but believe me, they will be instructed by Harry's wife, and she will be the piper that is calling the tune there. And they will do the dance to what she wants. And Harry comes way behind in their priorities. The fact that he's making disclosures like this is indicative of the fog that he sits within as a consequence of the way that he's been treated by his wife. The fact that he's not particularly bright. And also the isolation that he is experiencing as a consequence of his wife's intervention, which is showing him to be horrendously exposed in coming out with nonsense such as this. Let's dive below the line to find out if anybody sheds any further light upon him being a stallion, whether they have any further observations to share with us, which might be of interest. Level Ling up, this whole sad, tragic, cringing story just can't get any worse. Can it? Richard Mosley, he's beginning to make Matt Hancock look classy. 
Mummy bird. I mounted her quickly, after which she spanked me on the backside and sent me on my way. One of my many errors was to do it in the field, just behind a crowded pub. Oh dear, ha ha ha. It's like something out of a trashy novel. Has he no self-awareness at all? He sounds like a complete arse. A. Rickson, I'm cringing at every revealing crass action. This is so demeaning. Next up in the Sunday newspapers will be the woman's story of her adventures in the field, etc. Why did his wife ever let him write all this rubbish, true or not? Oh yes, money. Haley Thorpe, gross. We do not need or want to know this. Michael Holdsworth. So who would I prefer as a future king? Someone who identifies Harry's wife as rude, difficult and abrasive, or someone who dresses in a Nazi uniform, snorts cocaine, makes out behind the pub and betrays his family for cash? Harry isn't the only no-brainer. Steve Lambert. Yet again, things just happen to poor blameless Harry. He seems to have so little control over his life, you begin to wonder if there is something wrong. Gary Jackson. I shudder to think how many more details we would get if he wasn't trying to avoid publicity. A to P. How vulgar can things get? Reasonable comment. Presumably it was reviewed and elaborated on by Erin Dawes. The offload will be next. Caroline Edis. I feel sorry for William Charles and all the royal family having to hear these awful revelations. It's like something from a TV soap. Disgusting. Mark Goodyear. It reminds me of the story about Lord Snowden, who was asked by the Queen to take photos of the, child, of the Charles and Diana wedding. Will you want them mounted? Asked Lord Snowden. No, holding hands will do, said the Queen. Brutish. Christine McIntyre. And so the hunt begins to source the woman who accommodated the stallion. She'll undoubtedly be able to make a mountain of money, so don't think there will be any problem in her coming forward unless she's a woman of integrity and discretion, unlikely judging by the company he keeps and the creature he married. How much lower can he sink? This book has all the hallmarks of a Jeremy Kyle confessional. Jeff Allen. I'm surprised that Megan the Stallion has not been suggested by anyone. Ba-dum-tsh. Well done, Jeff Allen. Nick Harris. Confessions of a right royal plonker with Harry the Studs standing in for Robin Asquith. Jeremy Friend responds, more dud than stud. Karen Wood. Just makes me grateful that the Queen died before this trash was published. He can't have a brass neck to show for the coronation, can he? Salty Wombat. Maybe he was on the mushrooms again, and it was actually was a mare in the field. Well, Salty Wombat, certainly going to a particular place with that observation. It's demonstrative, of course, of uh, just how people who once rather liked Harry and now sickened by him Linda Harrison writes his grandmother, our late queen, would be so ashamed of his losing his virginity revelations being put out there for the world to read. Nothing regal about this. This man is a disgrace. He's become an embarrassment to the country. Steve Free, how can Harry be allowed to remain in America after he has admitted taking drugs? David Beecham, seems like the little fellow has spent most of his life being ridden by questionable women. Probably explains why he has a face like a smacked behind these days. And Reigns, this morning Harold's broken necklace and broken dog bowl story was funny. By tonight, with revelations like this and the drug taking, it has stopped being funny and has become tacky beyond belief. The poor king. El Beanie, I mounted her quickly, after which she spanked me on the backside, says the man who withdrew from royal life to protect his privacy, presumably to write bodice rippers of a particularly toe-curling kind. Jilly Cooper can rest easy. BG, he mounted her quickly. What a romantic way with words this ginge has. No longer a Tory. Starting early this morning, haven't laughed as much for a very long time reading these stories and comments. Andrew redacted. God, shut up, Harry. I demand brain bleach now. Wendy Berwick. I expect a frantic media hunt will be on for the lady in question whether she wants to be found or not. Harry needs to try to understand that one day his children will hear or read his memoirs. Not sure I'd be too delighted to see my dad's most private moments emblazoned right across the world's press in this way. I'm beginning to agree with those who think Harry has mentally slipped his moorings big time. Blade Jogger, stallion my backside. He has lost the plot, totally. Graham Wilson, woman seeks black stallion, gets ginger shettle and pony. Lily Pons, he's been reading too much Jilly Cooper. Jane Warren responds, can he read? This is a man who is a prince, and people who are his subjects are just now despising his behaviour and taking the piss out of him. 
he sinks lower and lower. This, of course, impacts on his wife because he is an extension of her. But as I've mentioned, she's seen all of this. She sanctioned all of this. She's allowing all of this. And she's doing so because it serves a purpose in terms of getting hold of money, of attacking other members of the royal family. And as I mentioned earlier, it has the collateral consequence of hanging him out further to dry. He may have been treated like a stallion, but at the moment, he's very much a nag that's heading to the knacker's yard. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.